said, I'm coming to you with a super fun video today. I'm sure you've seen it all over Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, TikTok, the tweet, Twitter, whatever it's called. I'm clearly not on Twitter, but I'm sure it's there. It's Ikea hacks. If you're not familiar with Ikea hacks, it's when people take something from Ikea and turn it into something a little more awesome. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every single Sunday and I'd love to see you back here next week. And if you like this video while you're watching, give it a thumbs up. I've got three projects for you today. The last one's probably my favorite, so stick around to the end of the video to see how that one's gonna turn out. And let's just get into it. I can stop yapping. You guys can start watching what I did. Okay, so for my first hack, I snagged this floor mat at Ikea in the as is section for like $4.99 and I'm pretty sure it normally sells for around 10 bucks, so I was pretty happy about that. I scoured Pinterest for some inspiration and I found some color blocked welcome mats with words on them that I really really loved, so I knew all I needed was a bit of spray paint to jazz this thing up. I went into my stash of leftover spray paint and I found four colors that were speaking to me. I ended up only using three colors, but more on that later. I also had these letter stickers laying around to use as a stencil. I originally used these for a birthday sign that I made like a year ago and I'm really glad I hung on to them. I had just enough of the letters left over to spell the word hello. I grabbed a garbage bag to cover the parts of the mat I didn't want to paint and then I used duct tape to create a straight line in this corner. I originally tried using regular masking tape and it did not stick to the mat so if you end up doing this make sure you use duct tape. I grabbed my favorite black spray paint and went to town. I took I took the mat outside so that I didn't inhale a bunch of spray paint fumes and I laid it out on a tarp. I also grabbed this handy dandy spray paint attachment. You just hook it onto any can of spray paint and it makes it a hell of a lot easier to spray paint stuff without getting paint all over your fingers. I heavily saturated the mat with several coats of paint, making sure to get it at all angles and down into the fibers of the mat. I peeled off the tape and brought it back to my shop to mask the rest of it off. I duct taped a triangle on the other side and I used the letter stickers to spell out the word hello, evenly spacing the letters and just kind of eyeballing it really. Then I grabbed my other spray paint colors and debated on which color should go where. I settled on this peony pink color for the triangle. I sprayed the heck out of it, saturating it a ton and getting it from all angles just like before. But when I took off the letters to reveal the word, I was super unimpressed. <laughs> not stoked. It felt lackluster and really not the look I was hoping for. I sat there for a little while trying to figure out how I was going to fix it. And then I spent the next few minutes with trial and error. It's usually how most DIY projects go for me actually. I didn't like the white paint and this black sharpie paint was going to take forever so I just busted out a black acrylic paint and a paintbrush and I painted over the hello. Then I wanted to make a stripe next to the black so I taped it off the width that I wanted and painted it this terracotta color. The minute the paint started coming out of the can I was like holy crap not cute. It was way too orange for me and I really didn't like it. I sat there debating how to fix it and I wanted to get a visual using some sheets of paper to see what the stripe would look like if it were white. I liked it much better and I went with it, retaping where I'd taped previously and making sure that I was very careful, recoating it several times to cover up the terracotta color super well. And now the reveal. What do you guys think? I think it turned out pretty cute for five bucks and some paint. You could customize this in a thousand different ways, so if you have one or you see one of these at Ikea, it's definitely worth picking up. Next up is this cutting board. I've seen some other Ikea hacks with this cutting board. People have made it into a coffee table or a cheese tray. I didn't want to do that even though those are super cute, so I had to dig for some creativity here. I decided to use the wood as a backdrop for some art I've been wanting to paint. I gathered up my supplies and I started taping off the edges. I wanted a really washed out white look so that the wood could still be seen through the paint. So I mixed up some white acrylic paint with some water and I just brushed it on evenly. I waited for that to dry thoroughly and then I peeled the tape off. The design I had in mind needed a straight edge, so I added back another piece of masking tape to ensure that I wasn't going to paint that part of the cutting board. Then I grabbed a bowl and I used it to trace a half circle. And then I painted that black, making sure I coated it really well and did my best to stay in the lines. 
I use my ruler and a pencil to make lines in various lengths going around the half circle to create a sort of sunburst design. Then I went over those same pencil lines with this black sharpie paint marker rather than trying to paint the lines with a paintbrush. Lord knows I would have totally screwed that up. This spot needed something extra, so I messaged my friend Annalise. She does custom stencils and vinyl and makes really cute stuff. I drew up some text that I like in Photoshop and then I sent her over the file. She got me the stencil really fast and it was the perfect size for this project. I carefully peeled the stencil from the backing and I laid it in place, making sure there were no air bubbles and then I just dabbed on a very tiny bit of paint in light, even layers until it was well covered. And that's it! Here's my attempt at some art, guys. What do you think? I stuck it in my kiddo's room, both on his dresser, and then I tried hanging it on the wall, too. Both totally work. I think it's pretty adorable, and it's actually a fun and free project. If you happen to have a cutting board laying around that you're thinking of tossing out, just use the wood and make some art instead. Okay, this last hack could not be easier. I saw this dome when I was at Ikea and it totally reminded me of a lamp that I've seen at Restoration Hardware. I was like, uh, I can make this into a lamp. So that's exactly what I did and I'm telling you, it was stupid easy. You'll see. I originally planned on making a little mold and pouring concrete for the base, but then I realized this old candle that I had that was nearly empty was literally the perfect size. It has a couple spots on the outside from the wax that I couldn't get rid of, but who cares? It adds to the charm, right? I melted and tossed the rest of the wax that was inside out and then I cleaned it up. I started by drilling out the center with an inch and a half hole saw and carefully made a hole for the light fixture to sit inside. I also cut out the same size hole in the metal base that comes with the dome. This part was a bit trickier than the hole in the candle container, but I was still able to get it cut. I realized too that if I wanted this to sit flat on the table, I was going to need a little notch cut out for the cord to feed through. I accidentally didn't film this part, but I just used an angle grinder to make a little notch. It was super easy. I ordered this cord kit on Amazon and I freaking love it. It's so inexpensive for what you get. The cord is sort of this rope type material and it has an on-off switch and the cord itself is really long. I fed the cord through plug side first, through the base and the metal thingy, and then glued everything in place using E6000. This glue is crazy tough and you only need a little bit of it. I dabbed some on where I needed it and then I pressed everything in place. Knowing the bulb was going to be seen, I opted for one of these bad boys. I screwed it in and tested it to make sure it worked and voila, that's it! So dang easy and so dang cute. I love the industrial vibe it gives off and it is the perfect size for a desk or a small table or even a little reading nook. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. If you're going to try these IKEA hacks, if IKEA hacks is something you guys are into and you want to see more videos like this, I'd love to get your feedback and I'd love to see what you guys create. So if you make any of this, tag me on Instagram or send me a message. If you stuck around to the end of the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss next week's video. I am so grateful to all of you for coming back week after week. Thank you again for watching. I will see you next Sunday.